BioBalance HealthCast episode 233, Preventing the Diseases of Aging. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. So you are a member of two different anti-aging medicine uh, associations of yes. doctors. Mm-hmm. And there is an argument in the medical community and in um, among those who deal with the processes of the FDA about the classifications of disease and the focus of treatment in medicine. Mm-hmm. And historically, the focus has been to attack an individual anomaly, like a fever a or a virus or an infection or a disease. Mm-hmm. Let's learn what we need to learn about this. And let's find a medicine that treats it, and then we're finished with that. And there's beginning to be an evolution that says, let's step back several steps mm-hmm. and see on a more global or holistic basis what we can see as patterns. And let's begin to attack at the, the causative junctures for some of those patterns. Mm-hmm. So aging is one of those things that most people do, and most physicians just say it's a process in the cycle of life it comes to all of us and then we die well we get older but we don't have to have the diseases of aging but most most physicians kind of just throw it into the wastebasket and say to their patients well you're getting older that's what comes with age see you know no no solution no recommendations just that's what happens we're not <laughs> have you had treating this it no, well, you must be getting older. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I mean, pretty much, you know, everything that you can complain about, I'm being, t- I'm tired, I'm, you know, I'm mm-hmm. achy. I'm, all of the things that when we talk about our patients with low testosterone, which is the first step in aging, um, they have all of those symptoms. And all our patients before they come to us have been turned down by many doctors in a, in a way that was not nice, saying, ah, we're just getting old, see ya. And they may be 40 years old. So these doctors just are younger than they are. So they haven't experienced it before. Well, and these doctors, as you say in your book, The Secret Female Hormone, the doctors would classically say, you're getting older, or they would say, you're fat, lazy, and crazy. Yeah. It's part of getting older. Right. That, and it's and, really not anything we can and do. And it must be your fault, so yeah. I'm done. Yeah. But but this art, there's an article in the Wall Street Journal that addresses this mm-hmm. and, and talks about how do we, how do we look at aging? Now that we are living so much longer, and the average uh, age for men lifespan in the U.S. is 76, and for women is 81. Now, that's average, Mm -hmm. which means there's a lot of people over that because there are a lot of very young deaths. I mean, there's a lot of people in the aging category, which would be anybody over 50, I guess. They don't really give us an age here of what's considered aging. Mm -hmm. But... This article is talking about a a group of scientists who are trying to um, make aging or the diseases of aging actually a medical problem instead of a wastebasket term where doctors would tell you, well, just don't worry about it or just suck it up and, and, you know, you have to live with this. But they want it to be addressed as an illness. Well, part of it is the terminology because words matter. And mm-hmm. the words you use color the way you think. A lot of interesting studies on that. Uh, but they want to change the terminology from focusing on the lifespan to focusing on the health span. Right. Mm-hmm. Because we don't really want to have a longer life. I don't want to have a longer lifespan where I'm Velcro to a wall somewhere drooling for mm-hmm. five years. Or 10 years or 20 years. Because I have no quality of life and they're just waiting on the system to kick off. Mm-hmm. You know, the battery's going to run down. Is it going to be today? Uh, <laughs> I, I want to have a healthy span for as many days as I can have. I mean, I want to live longer, but Mm -hmm. I want to live longer with a quality of life that lets me function and enjoy and embrace and contribute to life. Right. And that's, and I think that's what we all want if we actually think about it. But we have a problem when we go, when we go to a physician who doesn't have the same mindset of preventive medicine or treating people as they age so that they can age in a healthy fashion if they, if that's not their focus if they're just focusing on each symptom or each illness that you come in with the flu the you well, know you broke your arm something like problems. that 
Uh, you, mm-hmm. Your data yeah. there suggests that if you go to a doctor because you have a family history of heart illness or you've mm-hmm. begun to develop symptoms of heart illness, and they focus on that and they treat that and they are successful and there are treatments mm-hmm. that are often successful, then they add how much to... 4.5 years 4. to your life 4.5 years to your life expectancy if they can get you out of the at heart risk category. Right, and usually that means they're using statins. Right. But Or they're putting you on an exercise program or a diet program or which all, or all of them above. yeah so that so you can save your save 4.5 years you can live longer they don't talk about it if you're living healthier. Okay, so if you do that and you floss every day, that adds five years. Yeah, floss. yeah. So we're so, going to live. So we to be picked 200. up ten years for you right there. <laughs> but if you um, if you are, have your cancer cured, that adds three point five years. So the reason we're saying all these things is because the approach still is let's fight the identified problem, and. Kathy's argument in the work that she does and, and the doctor groups that she belongs to is to say, let's look holistically at the way we live our lives and let's try to find intersection points where an intervention can avoid or prevent these illnesses that are classified as illnesses of aging right. and let you have a longer health span. Right. And that's what they said when they took steps to cure or prevent all of the major illnesses that come along with aging, diabetes, heart disease, uh, cancers, what else do they have on here, stroke, um, that added 10 to 15 years to people's lives. So that's that's what I'm in the business of. I'm in the business not just of giving somebody hormones because, oh, it makes them feel better. I'm in the business of giving them the hormones that they used to have because that prevents many of the diseases of aging. So these people in this study in the Wall Street Journal are looking for a drug and looking for proof that all over the world, if they used some medical interventions, they could get people to live longer. Some Something that's consistent across cultures and across countries. If, right. if doctors in Canada use it, England use it, South Africa use it, we use it, there's data in all these cultures mm-hmm. that say, you know what, this is helpful or it's not. Right, and they're choosing a drug that is a a drug that we've used for a very long time for insulin resistance, and it can be used for diabetes, but they're using preventively preventively metformin. For people who are at risk of diabetes. For people who are at risk of aging, diabetes, aging, everything. They find that metformin prevents many of the diseases of aging. Not as many as testosterone does, Right. but they haven't addressed that. <laughs> they haven't addressed that hormone. They're addressing a medication. Testosterone is still controversial. That's right. just, I mean, we were in England to promote our book and they were talking about how uh, testosterone replacement had, was becoming common. And then the National Health Service decided it cost too much money to do for everybody. So Plus, they people live longer the, and it costs more money. And it costs more money. So as a, uh, an economic measure, they quit funding the replacement of testosterone in, in the health service. Sadly, you have to look at where, where you money, money and government. And when you look at the, um, the practice of medicine that looks over all of medicine and makes decisions based on populations, mm-hmm. um, they're not looking at each individual and each of us being healthier. They're looking at how much money do we have and how much can we spend per person. And if it may not be to the advantage of the of this society for us to have people live longer. So I'm convinced by the decisions that the FDA and the government makes about what they'll pay for that it's not to our advantage okay. as a country to pay for people to live longer. So that's one of the reasons this is not embraced. I can tell you as a by, therapist doing family therapy, I had lots of clients who were waiting on their parents and grandparents to die so they could get the money because they felt like they're not using it and I need it. Uh, so it's not. It's not just the society. Just, yeah, it's yeah. not just society. It no, could be individual families. To think that way, and hopefully you have a value system and a culture that prevents that from being uh, an operative issue. <laughs> you know, we don't just go kill grandma off so we can but, get her money. But if grandma was integral to the family and grandma yes. felt well enough to be like my mother-in-law lived with us for seven years and she was in her eight late seventies eighties before she 
had strokes, yes. but she lived with us for seven years. She did Rachel's homework with her. She taught yeah. her to read. Yes. She was she was part of our family. She went to all our dinners together and we with, with us to see friends. It was a positive kind of a relationship. Now, not everybody can have that relationship with their family, but luckily I got to have it with one of our yeah. parents. The, but that's something that if, if our grandparents weren't housed away in some body storage facility. body storage facility or, uh, you know sadly that's what we do yeah. then you know a place that kind of smells like urine and is unpleasant to go to or Clorox or Clorox yeah. either way but it's one of those things that you're right yeah. that but it's one of those things that we view as it's a chore yeah part of it is that our grandparents don't feel good and our parent my you know our parent our parents don't feel well so they're they're not really involved in our family and so that changes our perspective on how we look at them and but in other cultures they're People who are 80 and 90 in Greece are still working, and they're they have their gardens, and they're feeding themselves, and they're they're uh, living independently and being, not in, uh, right. You know, it, they the are norm taking care of themselves. Used to be to have a multi generational family, right? You know, and grandma helped with the babysitting or the laundry or the cooking, mm -hmm. and grandpa contributed in some way for what he could do, even if it was sitting and attending to the children. And the reason that worked is generations were closer together, people had babies sooner, and people died sooner. So that so worked that better. Cluster stayed together. That cluster stayed closer together. But now we've spread out adolescence. People don't have their babies till their thirties. You know, we've we live longer. So it's much harder well, to do that. Ad adolescence is an artificial stage of life. It was created as an outcome of the industrial revolution. When we started, I, I knew I knew that because my daughters lasted until twenty nine. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but, we it, but it's true. I mean. Uh, in primitive societies that don't function on a salaried economy or mm -hmm. pay pay for hourly work economy, mm -hmm. uh, an income, cash income, that they tend to have two marker points. You have a child uh, and then you have an adult. Mm -hmm. And when they go through puberty and can contribute to the population, mm -hmm. then they are divided. And they, they go start through working what's and a they rite have, of passage. And they get married. And they have to be adults or whatever. And, and contribute, pay mm -hmm. their way. But we created it uh, with high schools when we developed the national high school system. And then colleges. And, and then the college, yeah. But we created this time span that's new in the world. Mm -hmm. and, and not we, the United States, I didn't really but think industrial about that. revolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're still taking care of our children right. up until they're 30. Right. In any case, the whole, the whole um, environment's changed. And our lifespans gotten longer, but our health span stays the same. So what we are looking at and what these researchers are looking at is developing a longer health span, which I view as the key to people working longer. I mean, it doesn't mean you can't enjoy yourself, but people having useful work longer. Yes. Um, even if it's not at the job they did for the first 20 or 30 right. years of their lives at a different type of Maybe job. Maybe they can contribute at a different level or in a different way, but they need something to get up. Uh, they, they, one, get of up my, in the one of my older clients uh, talked about, I need something to push back against. I need something that provides some resistance to keep my muscles strong and my mind alert. And mm -hmm. so I'm still working. He said, I don't own my company anymore. And I'm not on you know, a 40 hour work week, mm -hmm. but I still go but to work. You're retired, I but am you're retired. not retired. But here I sit. Yeah, but here you sit. So, <laughs> so I'm in there's, that is, that's a good thing. I mean, that it's good to have useful work and that's what we do in this country is you're retired. See you later. You know, you're going to just sit around, Yeah. but other countries don't do that. And so they have a healthier, older population. Here's your go watch. Security will escort you from the building and terminate your access. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, big kind of companies. Yeah. So, so what we're looking at is we've addressed this answer differently than these researchers, but it's the same question. How do we make people live longer, but not sicker? A How do we health longer span. health span? Yes. So that maybe they're sick for six months before they they leave the earth. So, and how do we make them healthier so that they can spend their lives with their families and also. I mean, some people that wouldn't find that fun, <laughs> but or in in their with their friends, 
and enjoying life with a purpose, doing something that is is uh, productive in their lives. You can't do that if you're ill, and you can't do that if you have to go to the doctor every five minutes for you're something too much pain to move to function. Right, or or if you have, I mean, if you have terrible diabetes, you can't get around. You can't moves you just sit so you, you become isolated even if you're not institutionalized there are so many elderly people that are isolated in their homes and they don't go out they don't do things because they're fragile or they're limited or their health doesn't permit mm -hmm. uh, them to play golf or go walk or what have you and they just get more and more isolated and they get sicker and sicker mm -hmm. you know that there are studies that say that uh, you talk about economic savings and the mm -hmm. cost of society for mm -hmm. health care and long longevity we spend 60% of all the money that's ever spent on our health individually the last six months of our lives. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah. I've read many articles about that. And, and so, that doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't make sense. especially. But if, we don't know it's the last six months of our lives. Well, we don't know that. <laughs> uh, well, I, often we do. Oftentimes we but, do. But. but the point we're trying to make is that researchers and practical doctors, just like you, are trying to say, where are these choke points that we can make an intervention to improve mm -hmm. the health span, to avoid all of these illnesses of aging that are so debilitating, mm -hmm. or to limit the debility or disability that comes from them? So these researchers in the, in the Wall Street Journal article are looking at metformin. Mm -hmm. You look at testosterone. Mm -hmm. You in, in and exercise diet and and exercise. Yeah, but I lifestyle. also look at metformin. If so, I do people's labs, and if they have insulin resistance, I treat that along with their hormones. Yes. And because, thyroid. And if their thyroid's low, that can cause you to age and get sick faster. And growth hormone. I mean, yeah. there are a cluster of things that have been identified that the doctors drop, that practice, age. and then you get and then you get infirm. Right. And, and so doctors who practice age-resistant medicine, they're arguing to have aging process classified as a disease that's right. treatable and that for which the FDA will approve interventions and for right. which insurance companies will, will pay. pay. And Medicare will pay. Because that's the way our medical system works. Mm -hmm. You don't really call it a disease unless somebody's going to pay for it, basically. Interesting. That's, I mean, that's America. Yeah. And nobody wants to pay for it themselves. Right. Which is, I mean, most people can't pay for it themselves, but many people don't want to yeah. either. They don't see the value in it. Mm -hmm. When we're looking at a healthcare system that's even more broken than it was before several years ago when it changed, we aren't going to have much of a healthcare system to depend on. So we better get healthy because we're not going to have a lot of these expensive interventions available uh, if you don't, if you, if the government won't pay for it because it's all governmental now, then. We're not going to have MRIs, CT scans. So you're using basically a tough love argument, just like parenting teenagers. You know, you have boundaries, you cut them off. It's like you got health care. I'm not doing the cutting month. off. The government's I, I doing this. That. No, you're off. I'm saying, how do you get through this? You get healthy. You have to be healthy. Exactly. Otherwise, if you're not healthy and you're not, I mean, it will pay you money to stay healthy. So it would be it will not cost say, you money to stay healthy. It would be reasonable to say that you're not practicing medicine. You're practicing health care. Yeah, I am practicing health care, but I'm also But you're also, care. you use medicine as a way to improve health care. But you, you fuss at people all the time about... Like you. <laughs> ...quality of life and a holistic approach, and you have to bring, bring it to the table. You have to come with your contributions of diet and exercise and mental attitude and And take the engagement. medicines I tell them. Yeah. And, and, I mean, and actually go out and do exercise, not just say you did it or buy a treadmill and hang your clothes on it. I mean, it's not, it's more than that. You have to actually put your body through it. You can't just think about it. So that's, yeah, I am, I'm kind of a nudge, nudge. What do you call that? Nudge? Where you're always nudge. I think. nudge. So yeah. I'm always kind of pushing my patients to be better. It doesn't do, I mean, it's not doing anything for me. It's doing something for them. I want them to be better, but you, they have to are, come halfway. You're a thorn in the side of my complacency. That's right. <laughs> but that's only because I, I, I want you to be healthy. Uh, yes, no, I respect and that. And I want you to avoid the illnesses of aging and not ever get diabetes and not ever have any of these aging, heart disease, any of those things. There are interventions we've got. So our interventions often use what these people use, metformin, yeah. but we also use hormones, which they haven't 
really put into this play. Well, not for the purposes of this single research that they're right. doing. They're, they're creating a research program called TAME, mm -hmm. and it's all focusing on metformin. But mm -hmm. as you've said, there are other things out there that also impact the choke points. Testosterone mm -hmm. replacement mm -hmm. is one. Estrogen replacement is one. Thyroid replacement is one. Growth hormone replacement is one. And that's totally off the books. It, yeah. the, the FDA won't approve that for anybody except kids that don't grow and yeah. a couple other things. So they've made it almost like prescribing almost criminal. morphine. And they yeah. make it criminal. Yeah. Which is scary. Yeah. So, uh, but there are other ways to stimulate growth hormone, which is testosterone stimulates growth well, hormone. Well, and we, we also know, and this article goes on to say, that there are recognized established interventions that work. They're just not medical. They're things like diet and exercise, uh, nutrition, social engagement, stress reduction. Mm -hmm. We know things about each of those steps that we can try to teach people so they will incorporate it in their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. if they do those things. Those things are helpful. But medicine is saying there may also be medical interventions mm -hmm. that combined with these other steps get us a longer health span right so right. hopefully so, they're right and the government will listen and we'll all just live happily ever after we're going to have to do interventions earlier though we yeah. need interventions we need to go back to yeah. Kids exercising in school, having the so many overweight kids. The president, sit in I mean, front well, they the took television all day they took away candy. gym. I mean, they took gym out of the curriculum in many schools, and I mean, yeah. they took away exercise. So we have to start at each level. There has to be an intervention at each level of of age where we intervene and teach people. I mean, they've taught us. Government gave us the wrong diet for the last thirty five years. The I mean, for goodness' pyramid, sakes, that yeah. food pyramid was upside down, and you know. Because it of the made us food fat. conglomerates who were marketing the Right. Stuff. It's because we sell corn and we sell wheat. Yeah. So they put wheat as the biggest food. So it wasn't about health. So they need to get their act together, too. So, so now we're all diabetic and gluten uh, right. intolerant. So it's not always what they tell us that we should eat. But that's how school food... Listen to your mother, not the government. <laughs> 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 that's true so in any case we have to make these interventions but in people who are 40 and over these other these interventions that they're studying should work and we should be able to employ them we should have the results of this study in the next five years and we should employ them as we go in making people healthier and we'll tell you about their outcomes yes and hopefully the the society the medical system and the governmental system will absorb these arguments to change but you are ahead of the pack because you now have this information and there are things that you can do to pursue this on your own thank you for listening email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com you can find the biobalance healthcast on itunes and on youtube for more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314- 993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.